Cashless Welfare returns. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein or cup of coffee, let's have a look at this article from Yahoo Finance. So, the cruel social experiment, cashless welfare card returns, written by Lucy Dean. Now, I understand how people are frustrated at the idea of, of people bludgeoning on the dole or welfare and getting their money and just wasting it, spending it on uh, substances that they shouldn't, or drinking it or gambling it away. Now, that's always going to happen to one extent or another. Now, the danger is of implementing things like this cashless welfare card is that is the first step. Look at all these central banks around the world pushing for central bank digital currencies, trying to take the goodwill and excitement people have around crypto and turning it into the ultimate centrally controlled mechanism. Imagine if your central bank currency is affected by your geolocation. You're in an area that has too much economic activity. Your purchasing power has been decreased. Oh, we need to stimulate that part of the economy. Your purchasing power has been increased. You have made the correct Twitter responses. Your social demographic has been underprivileged. We'll increase your, social, your spending power based on this criteria. You've had the wrong opinion. You can't buy bread for five weeks. You're overweight. You can't eat. So that's the issue, everyone. If you think it's okay to dictate to people how they should spend their money, regardless of how stupid or foolish you think they are, that can be expanded. That is the danger. And don't get me wrong. I get frustrated and angry too at stupid people on welfare pissing away their money, just digging themselves into a deeper and deeper hole, particularly when they go into debt, particularly when they rent things they shouldn't. The solution is to improve our education system and to teach people how to be better. That's the only chance we have. I think a lot of it also has to do with other social issues that can't be addressed simply by this punitive system. So I can, I can see both sides to it, guys. I can understand why and out of desperation some communities are wanting this particularly in the remote parts of Australia where they've got alcohol and intimate partner violence issues, the communities are asking for these cards to be deployed. So where do we stand, everyone? Should it be on a community level if there's community engagement? I would argue there needs to be more political involvement at the lowest level, the local level. Some of these laws you know, at a federal level should be decanted all the way down to the local level, to the city, city state level. And that's where you can have some say in your politics. I know that would add a wealth of complexity to our daily lives and be incredibly frustrating. But hopefully then communities could more closely represent the will of the people that are in them. Just so long as we can still have freedom of movement and leave those communities. Well, let's see. Let's see. So more Australians on the job seeker payment may now have their incomes managed as the government resumes its cashless welfare scheme. Under the scheme, up to 80% of certain recipients' income is quarantined to a cashless debit card, where it cannot be spent on products like alcohol or tobacco. The government paused the scheme from accepting new entrants during the COVID-19 period as millions of Australians joined the jobless queue. I mean, what if it was voluntary? What if it was voluntary? If you could volunteer, I know some people can volunteer to be on this. If your money management skills are so bad that you need such a paternalistic intervention in your life, if you can't even manage your own finances or your own uh, skill set to the point where you have to be long term dependent on this government support, maybe then. However, Social Services Minister Anna Rustin said the cashless welfare scheme will now begin taking new job seeker entrants from Wednesday. Now that the number of Australians coming onto social security payments has returned to pre-pandemic levels, it is appropriate to lift the pause, Rustin said. Community leaders and stakeholders support the lift of the pause to ensure new income support recipients are spending their social security payments on the essentials. She said new entrants will have a 
staggered entry to the scheme, helping new entrants transition. As it stands, the cashless welfare scheme is in place in the Northern Territory, the East Kimberley and the Goldsfields in Western Australia, Saduna in South Australia, Bundaberg, Harvey Bay, Cape York and Doomadgee in Queensland. The scheme has been running as a trial since 2016 and was initially intended to run for only one year. The government push last year to make the scheme permanent failed, but the card will remain for those regions for another two years. Policies racist targeting blast. I mean, come on, it's not racist, guys. Sure, you've got a lot of indigenous communities here, but the last time I checked, Bundaberg and Harvey Bay were pretty mixed, okay? Come on. Harvey Bay is the newly wed or nearly dead. That's the people who go there. The scheme has been repeatedly condemned in recent years as punitive, ineffective and racist in its application. Much of the program's participants are indigenous, with 76% of those in Saduna indigenous, 82% in East Kimberley, 48% in Goldfields and 18% in Bundy and Harvey Bay. See, I told you, guys, Bundy and Harvey Bay, come on. A recent government commission study of the scheme in Saduna, East Kimberley and Goldfields regions by the University of Adelaide found that the card has attached to strong feelings of shame and embarrassment. Okay. Is that a bad thing? It, we're living in a community now where you can't even fat shame someone. Where you can't, you know, you can't even shame someone. It, isn't that, that's the traditional method of learning the hard way that your behavior isn't appropriate to the culture that you're in. If being perpetually dependent on government support, shouldn't that be shameful and embarrassing? Are we beyond that now? If you're not, if you don't want that, then let's just go to a UBI, guys. Fire all the people working in welfare. Get a UBI, but then also get rid of minimum wage. The researchers noted that alcohol use decreased while the scheme was in place, but noted that that couldn't be directly attributed to the card alone. However, another University of South Australia Monash University study found that in Seduna, the card had no had no substantive impact on gambling, crime, or drug and alcohol abuse. The racist targeting of the cashless debt card continues the deeply entrenched colonial violence in the welfare system as the First Nation women who the card is supposedly intended to help are again being denied self-determination, the Australian Unemployed Workers Union said on Wednesday. I don't know how you can have a union of unemployed. Shouldn't, don't you need, how are they going to pay their dues? I mean, here's the thing, guys. Some of these communities are so remote. You know, would the towns exist without welfare? The government has no evidence that this paternalistic racist program helps people and yet it is shamelessly ramping up its dangerous income management experiment, including with the CDC also being pushed into Cape York and the Northern Territory as of last week. Greens Senator Rachel Seward also condemned the scheme describing the government as flogging a dead horse. Give it up, the cards don't work. This cruel social experiment needs to end. I'm deeply concerned that this card may keep people in violent situations and the low rate of income support severely limits the options for women and children leaving home violence. Okay, where's the alternative opinion where the government is saying local... I, I, I've read the reports. You'll, you'll find the videos on this channel where governments are saying local communities are calling for this, where local bodies are encouraged by it. So what do you think, everyone? What do you reckon? Do you think it's just some evil racist scheme from the governments to, to keep control of the money or is it a sign that you've got some communities which have some serious serious problems what do you reckon everyone let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below please like share and subscribe to the channel have you been on a card like this i mean the problem is if your money is locked away in a debt card how can you pay off your debt how can you um, invest how can you get out of the mess that you're in maybe that's not even on the in the thought process of people in this situation anyway guys thanks for watching as always if you're a fan of the channel and want to support the content i create here there are a few ways you can support us you can join us on youtube or patreon you can support us using our affiliate links on amazon ebay independent reserve or aussie broadband you can buy a merch from heiser says use gold pass from the perth mint or support us via paypal take care and I'll see you next time.
Bye for now.